In this lesson, you'll learn about transformations of functions. Before we start, let's take a look at this very general equation here. h of x equals a times f of x minus h plus k. And use this just to remind ourselves what happens when numbers are placed in place of a, h, and k. Remember that a controls the vertical stretch or the vertical compression of the graph. h controls the horizontal translation or horizontal shift of the graph and k controls the vertical shift, the movement up and down of the graph. So let's take a look at the graph here and see if we can determine what values should go in place of a, h, and k for g of x. We're going to let the red graph be f of x and the blue graph be g of x, and what we're trying to determine is how f of x was transformed so that it became the graph of g of x. Let's start with the numbers that go here in place of h and in place of k. Those seem to be the easiest because really they just involve counting spaces. We're going to see how this point moved to this point on g of x. Now we'll first put what's inside the parentheses for h, and that's going to be a horizontal translation. So we're looking to see how it moved horizontally. And if we grab this point here and count over until we're directly below the corresponding point on g of x, we're going to move one, two, three, four, five spaces to the right. That means a minus five is going to go here in this blank. Now let's focus on the same two points, one on f of x, one on g of x. And let's see how this graph moved from negative three, zero to two, three. And we do that again just by counting straight up and down. So we're going to count one, two, three, and this puts us straight across from that point on g of x here. That gives us a positive three here for our vertical translation. So that much of the equation we have, g of x equals some number times f of x plus a negative five plus three. Now let's figure out what the vertical stretch or compression is here. Before we do that, I'm going to clean this graph up a little bit so we can focus just on the curves. Let's again focus on the same two points, one on each graph. So one at negative three, zero here on f of x, and then over here at two, three on g of x. To me, they're the easiest points to look at on these graphs to really see what's going on. Now if I take from negative three and move over one unit, I go up two units before I hit a crosshair here or the corner of a box or where two integers meet, negative two, two. It takes me over one and up two units. And for a vertical stretch or compression, you're really focusing on the y-axis or the changes in the y-values because that's vertical. If we come out here now to g of x and we look at two, three, if we move out the same one unit like we did here on the f of x, how many units do we have to go up before we're at a crosshair or the corner of a box again? We're going to have to go up one, two, three, four units to be here, back where we have two integers meeting, three, seven. So instead of going up two, we went up four. That tells us that f of x has been stretched by a scale factor of two, because four is twice as big as two. Let's take a look at f of x and g of x together on one graph without the translations, without the horizontal and vertical shifts. And that might help make this a little clearer. The red graph is still f of x, and the blue graph is still g of x. All we've done is slid g of x over five units to the left and three units down to undo the translation. And we're doing this so that we can better see what the stretch looks like, the vertical stretch. Focusing again on this point on each graph, let's first look at f of x. Increasing the x value by one causes a two unit increase in the y value for f of x. And looking at g of x, a one unit increase in x causes a one, two, three, four unit increase in the y value. So hopefully you can see that f of x has been stretched vertically by a scale factor of two. To finish up our equation over here, we need to put a two where the a would go. So our equation for g of x in terms of f of x would be g of x equals two times f of x minus five plus three. And that would be our answer. But before we end the lesson, let's check at least one point on our graph to make sure that g of x works. 
Let's see what g of 3 gives us. What it should give us, when we come over here to 3, we're up at 7. So when we're finished evaluating for g of 3, we should get a 7. Let's see if that happens. So we'll say g of 3 equals 2 times f of 3 minus 5 plus 3. And that'll give 2f of negative 2, 3 minus 5 is negative 2, plus 3. And to get f of negative 2, we don't have an equation to use, but we have a graph. So we'll go to f of negative 2, which is right here, and see what the y value is. And the y value at f of negative 2 is positive 2, getting that from right here. So this f of negative 2 equals 2. And then we'll bring down this 2 and our plus 3. And we're going to get 2 twos are 4, plus 3 is 7. So g of 3 gave us a 7, and sure enough, g of 3 is 7. Now you know a bit more about transformations of functions. See you next time.